uh, straight away from Voice of America, standing by in Washington, D.C. Hi, Masofa, how are you? Hello, very, very good. I hope everyone's been well, too. We're all well, and very thank oh, you very thank much you. for being here with us. As we know, a couple of hours away until the election, the 3rd of November, right there in America. So how has it been doing? Is, can you see more people are standing in line in polls places as people wanted to vote in person? Well, that's the astounding thing about this election. Um, more people have voted uh, let's take Texas as an example. More people have voted early in Texas than uh, the total number of all voters in 2016. So that's the situation in a lot of states, a lot of uh, uh, territories that are um, holding early voting. It's a record number of early voting numbers. Um, there's a project called the United States Election Project uh, conducted, among others, by the University of Florida. They've been tracking early votes and also voting by mail. And uh, the last count, which is only a few hours ago, put the total number of early voters at 97 point something million voters. Now, as a comparison, in 2016, the total number of voters was around 130 million voters. Now, the University of Florida's Michael McDonald now expects turnout to top uh, something like 65% a number not seen since 1908. Now, of course, uh, in Indonesia, we're used to participation turnout at around 70, 80 percent. But in the U.S., it's barely a half or uh, somewhat over a half of eligible voters end up actually voting in the elections. In the last election, uh, 92 million decided to just sit it out and not vote. And uh, the participation rate at the time was 55 percent. Not too different from the 2012 election, also 55%. The election before that, that brought Barack Obama to the presidency, was a little higher at around 58%, but we might be looking at 65%. Now, that, of course, depends on whether uh, we see droves of people on election day itself or whether most of the voters have already voted by now, Caroline. So do you think that this is likely because of the COVID-19 pandemic that we are seeing a lot of early votes because we're going to see less votes? Or do you think there is actually a spike due to some reason uh, for this particular U.S. election? Well, COVID is the main reason that a lot of voters uh, cite as being their, uh, their reason for voting early or voting by mail. They do not want to get stuck at a polling station um, with lots and lots of people stand in line for a very long time on election day on November 3rd. So they want to do it as early as possible and as conveniently and as safely as possible. Uh, also, there is, of course, uh, a lot of uh, frustration about uh, the COVID pandemic. The Indonesian American uh, you interviewed earlier um, did not disclose her political views, but. Um, from her uh, two priorities, it seems she may be leading Democratic. Uh, Pew Research Center poll basically said that the two most important issues for Democratic leading voters, uh, those who support Joe Biden, are health care and also the COVID pandemic. Whereas for Trump supporters and Republican leading um, voters, they tend to, their two priorities are uh, the economy and also um, law uh, issues regarding violent crime. And so that's why they support President Trump's uh, tougher line on policing uh, and also his uh, law and order message resonates with them. Yeah, so um, it is a very polarized election and everyone wants to have their voices heard. And that seems to be motivating a lot of people to go to the polls early and as quickly as they can. Now, so far, according to the United States Election Project, this has been mostly a Democratic turnout from the Democratic Party, two to one. For every two Democratic voters, there's one Republican and also one uh, independent voter, which we don't know where they swing yet. But, um, uh, of course, uh, Republicans are hoping to make up for the shortfall on Election Day because the messaging from the tough Trump campaign has been vote on Election Day. So they're hoping to have a red uh, uh, firewall, as it were, uh, on Election Day to offset uh, perhaps the early advantage that Democrats have in early voting, Paul. And yeah, Mr. Nova, uh, you mentioned about the Indonesian Americans and the Indonesian community there. Can you share with us more about 
the Indonesian community in the United States, are they more uh, kind of leaning Democratic and Biden, or are they more kind of leaning Trump and the Republican side on the issues that you just mentioned right now? It's uh, very interesting because uh, we see this year a sort of uh, flourishing of Indonesian-American participation. Of course, there are more and more Indonesian-Americans, a lot of them concentrated in California. Uh, California is, of course, a democratic a stronghold, but it doesn't mean all Democrat. It doesn't mean all Indonesian Americans in California are um, democratic. Uh, so we don't see one voting bloc supporting e either candidate. We see equal numbers of Trump supporters as we do Biden supporters. Uh, we get uh, further up along the West Coast. Oregon and Portland also have has a, a strong. Uh, Trump um, supporting uh, organizations, and they've even organized themselves, if I'm not mistaken, the name is uh, Indonesian American Women for Trump. Uh, but, but there's also a, uh, uh, an organization in Philadelphia, which also has a large Indonesian American population in the East Coast. And they are uh, they're calling themselves the Pejuang Indonesian Coalition, and they are more pro-Biden. So we see a diversity of uh, views from Indonesian Americans. And this, uh, of course, reflects their views also of the issues. Uh, one issue which is important to everyone is immigration. And they have qualms about um, uh, both candidates' uh, immigration stance. Uh, most of them uh, do believe in uh, family based immigration, you know, where you can sponsor your mother, your father, your uh, a child, uh, your adult child. Uh, to get a green card and eventually citizenship. Now, that's something that's being um, scrutinized by Republicans. They might want to end that and focus on skills-based immigration. That is, uh, certainly affects both sides. But we kind of see an even split among uh, Indonesians, even though we don't know, of course, uh, how the percentage, the exact percentage points. And we also see a lot of Indonesian Americans running for office, albeit local office for now. Uh, we had an interview recently of a judge uh, elected in New Orleans, uh, Marissa Hutabarat, uh, who was, um, whose father was um, from uh, North Sumatra, of course, and also yeah. his, his mother, uh, her, her mother was a, 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 a Chinese, uh, a Chinese in uh, a Chinese Thai, if I'm not mistaken. But you know, she's a, a member of the Indonesian American community, and she's now run. So, you know, um, we have, you know, I, I think it won't be too long before we see uh, an Indonesian American in Congress or in national politics, at least, the, the rate that, that this is going. Thank you so much, uh, Mas Nova, for your insight all the way from Washington, D.C. We hope that the election, remainder of Election Day runs smoothly for you out there, and we hope to speak to you again soon.